Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Week 2 Open Recap Show presented by Rad. I'm Sean Woodland. He's Tommy Marquez. 24.2 is in the books. It was your birthday this past weekend. Happy belated birthday. And I feel like Dave Castro took this workout, gift-wrapped it, put a card on it, a nice bow, and put it on a silver platter for you because this was in your wheelhouse. If I had to pick three movements to uh, to kind of be the follow-up to 24.1, maybe something that would be a little bit gentler mm. to us uh, big fellas, it would have been these three movements. I absolutely loved all three of them. And as the announcement was going out, I was just perking up even more and more and being like, <laughs> okay, what's the time domain? Let's make it long. And they went 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and I was just in heaven. And it was an awesome, awesome test. And you absolutely knocked it out of the park. <laughs> we have a busy show today. We're going to recap all the top scores from 24.2 for the men and the women. We'll take a look at the overall leaderboard as it stands for both divisions heading into the third and final week. We will recap Tommy's experience down at CrossFit Paradiso at Friday Night Lights that Rad was helping out with down there. As I mentioned, Rad is our sponsor for this show. You can scan the QR code on your screen or you can go to Rad dash global.com check out all the great stuff that they have on the website including these awesome rad trainers well as i mentioned you were down south at crossfit paradiso rad was at crossfit south brooklyn last week lauren Cleo was at that you got to go to this one and got to do the workout with adam clink yeah there was the friday night friday night lights road show moved out to the west coast i mentioned it was my birthday weekend so what better way to celebrate than go down to venice beach which is a super fun quirky area of la I absolutely love it um you have some awesome, awesome street tacos. I had a little few Al Pastor tacos to power my 24.2 attempt. Tequila Mezcal Bar for all the the uh, the athletes and members of the gym down there. You had a DJ just spinning tunes. That was awesome. Kept the vibes high the entire time. And, and for, for me, it was just a great experience through and through, especially for a workout that, like we mentioned before, was right in my wheelhouse. The 24.2 got kicked off with a bang as CrossFit brought in some superstar power for the live announcement from Justin Medeiros' Shred Shed in Idaho, WWE heavyweight champion Seth Rollins was on hand in full regalia, in full character. It just was absolutely phenomenal making that announcement. He had dropped great nicknames for Colton Merton's The Iron Hog. That was perfect. Which was <laughs> outstanding. I had the belt with him the whole nine yards. It was a lot of fun to watch. And then he even did the workout afterwards. And footage of that is on the CrossFit Games social media site if you want to check it out. It's on Instagram. But Colton Mertens put up a great fight. A uh, little disadvantage, though, to a guy like Justin Medeiros. He had the home field advantage. And Medeiros wins that one. And the two of them really set the tone for the rest of the weekend. Let's get to the top scores. We'll start on the women's side, where two Swedes right now are separated by just one rep. Emily Claw with 926 reps. As of this recording is the top scorer. Hannah Carlson is one rep back of her. You also have some games athletes up there, some familiar names like Ariel Lowe and Laurel Horvath putting up a solid score as well. But Tommy, what do we know about the two Swedes that are sitting on top of the overall leaderboard? I think some people have heard Carlson's name, but I don't know a lot of people know Emily Claw. Well, yeah, because Emily Claw doesn't have any uh, CrossFit Games experience beyond the Open. She's had some pretty solid performances in the past, even finishing in the top 200 worldwide, but nothing to really move her beyond quarterfinals hasn't participated in those stages just yet so this could be a little bit of a uh, coming out party for her as far as putting up a performance that competes with the best in the sport but as you mentioned Hannah Carlson way back in 2019 was a surprise qualifier during the sanctionals era out of the CrossFit Reykjavik championships I was actually there on site and she was really kind of the talk of the entire competition weekend she finished fifth right there and due to the backfill uh, orientation was able to get that spot and she got a spot that very few people predicted ahead of some very talented athletes. Fast forward to last year in 2023, she goes to the games with CrossFit Prestanda, a top 10 team once everything shook out. So a ton of competition, both as an individual and as a team with a, a, an appearance at semifinals mixed in there as well. So she's very capable, she's strong, and she has a good engine, perfect setting for a, a test like this. Moving over to the men's side, how about Tudor Magda breaking the 1,000 rep mark, 1,001 reps for the top score. Heinrich Kapolainen is a three back of him. In fact, if you look at spots one through eight right now, all CrossFit Games vets. But Tudor Magda, I think when people look at this workout, that was not a name that got thrown out there as someone would have, who would have a top score. But when I think back about what I've seen from him in competition, it makes total sense. Well, he, you know, he's kind of coming off of a down year, mm -hmm. right? 
You know, he's one of the former uh, teen, Teenage Games champs that made the leap to individual after a couple of years trying to break through. Um, he makes the games in 2022, misses out last season, really has had some eye-popping performance, particularly when the tests are heavy or extremely skilled. Fantastic gymnastics, really strong with the barbell. But this kind of sits as one of those tests in between for him. And I think for someone that's trying to get back to the games and just show a little bit better blend of capacity, this is a great performance from him. It's not particularly heavy. It's not particularly skilled. The double unders are pretty basic skill for most of these games athletes. You just have to put your head down and grind and not take your foot off the gas pedal that entire time for a 20 minute time domain that maybe doesn't necessarily favor him compared to some of the best in the sport. It had been something he was good at when he was a teenager, but for this, for someone that's trying to get back to the games, and a lot of people know he has a ton of talent behind him, this is a good sign for him moving forward. With just one week remaining, let's look at the overall standings now for the women heading into 24.3, and it's Grace Walton with just 11 total points. She's got an eighth and a third right now who sits atop the overall standings. Christy Bishop currently sits in second, followed by Christina Egerbeck in third, and Ariel Lowen on the podium of the CrossFit Games last year, now sits in fourth place. But Grace Walton is an up-and-coming athlete who was close to making the Games last year, and maybe this is the year she finally punches through. Yeah, it's very similar back-to-back -back weeks. Last week, it was Jules Hannaford in her performance. This week, it's Ju uh, Gracie Walton uh, on the overall leaderboard. As young athletes in that 22 to 24 age range, that could be the next big thing coming out of Oceania with some athletes step aside and not competing or switching divisions. This is a prime opportunity for her. And, and let's be honest, right now she's in contention for the overall uh, win on the Open for the leaderboard. It may not mean much competitively, but you get $15,000 for winning the Open. That's a huge chunk of cash for a young athlete that's trying to come up. And you think about the costs that are associated with this sport, particularly traveling from Oceania. That's a huge motivating factor for her on top of the fact that she was just three spots shy of qualifying last year at Torian. She then backed it up with a third place podium per finish, uh, finish at the Down Under CrossFit Championships. So it, really, it was only one test that kept her out of the games. Test six at semifinals, mm. where she had a 27th on that high skill pirouette legless rope climb type test. So right now, a lot of people think that she could be the one to break through this year in Oceania and a win in the open would certainly be a feather in the cap for that. Let's turn our attention now to the men's side of the competition, a little bit closer on top of the overall standings for them than it is for the women. And right now, it's Alexander Carone, who has a two point lead over Dallin Pepper. And then this guy, Kale Lehman, sitting in third with 28 points. He's got a 10th and an 18th. Every year, someone new pops up on the leaderboard during the World Wide Open. Kale is certainly that, uh, but Alexander Carone looking good in first place. And, yeah, and another athlete hoping to have a nice bounce back. You remember, unfortunately, last season at semifinals, he had was medically withdrawn due to an, a chest injury. That same injury popped up again at Wadapalooza, and he had to withdraw there. And he was hoping to get some high-level competition experience back under his belt to get ready for the season. I spoke with him at Wadapalooza. He said it's kind of a nagging thing, and he's hoping he should be healthy uh, for the season. It was more of a precaution to withdraw from Wadapalooza and make sure he was okay. And so far, he's showing why he made that decision a little bit of a business decision mm -hmm. if you will because he looks great through two weeks two weeks of the open and congratulations to him because on march 1st he got engaged hey, as well so a, a nice little tip of the cap to start the season and and then kale layman uh someone who doesn't have much experience beyond that the might be an overstatement yeah beyond one seat <laughs> one year in the open he did compete at wadapalooza this past year but on the men's intermediate team and they finished 35th but he is a member of our, our military. He goes to the United States Military Academy at West Point where he trains at CrossFit Black and Gold, which is a part of West Point. Um, it is a place for the cadets to train and, and you know get prepared in that methodology particularly. But so far, two weeks of the Open, you have two top 20 performances, even if a few scores pop in here late and shake him out there. He's sitting in a good position where another wheelhouse workouts show up. We could have this total unknown coming and winning the Open. And I think that's kind of the beauty of what this stage of competition mm -hmm could present for a young athlete who clearly has some capacity, but we have a few more things to test to make sure he's legit. It's definitely going to be an exciting week three. Uh, some close races that need to be decided, especially on the men's side. And we'll see if old Kale Lehman can stay up there uh, on top and absolutely grab some people's attention heading into quarterfinals. Friday night lights is a big part of the CrossFit community. And I actually 
got to take part in my very first one for 24.2. Did it at NC Fit alongside Jason Kalipa, who I nice. thought was going to break the rower as he <laughs> usually does. That guy had a he had an aggressive pace on that workout that I was going to make no attempt to even get close to. I would expect nothing less. I would imagine that Jason's rower probably ended up about 12 feet behind where it started. <laughs> it almost went through uh, the adjoining wall that was separating <laughs> us from the other uh, business in that plaza. But I know you had a great time uh, down at CrossFit Paradiso as Rad was there to help them put on their Friday night lights. No doubt. And, and as we mentioned earlier in the show, Rad has really been focused on amplifying the Friday night lights experience for a handful of affiliates around the globe. Week one was in South Florida. Brooklyn. We too was down in LA at CrossFit Paradiso Venice. I had an opportunity to go down there, be a part of that. I was down at that affiliate five years ago, actually six years ago for the liftoff event for CrossFit. Yeah, we hosted a, a live stream there, um, throwing around some big weights. And this time I got to go down, take part in that event. And it involved getting to get touch base um, and talk with the owner of Paradiso CrossFit, David Paradiso, and talk about the journey that that affiliate has been on. We are in Venice Beach at one of our two locations, and we've been here for, it's our 11th year at Venice Beach. We started in Marina del Rey, which is a few miles from here. Opened this gym up, we had two locations, and uh, we've just been growing ever since. Anywhere you go in the world, they know Venice Beach. Just have a CrossFit gym in the, the mecca, the epicenter of fitness, and, and to be uh, part of the community in Venice. Like you talk to people here, we've been here for so long, like they know our gym and we're part of the community. So it's, it's awesome, uh, I, feel, I feel grateful. Friday Night Lights is a unique part of the year. Every year we look forward to it. Uh, we, we talk about it and so when it's finally here every year. It embodies what we're trying to do is fitness, community, fun, and friendly competition, so. Yeah, I think it's cool to touch different areas of the country. Obviously in the Northeast last week um, and being in Brooklyn, that was a really cool experience there. But there's just something about the West Coast, the West Coast coast culture. Uh, we were at, down at Venice Skate Park yesterday and there's just something about the outdoors and the atmosphere here in Venice Beach. Friday Night Lights is going down. We have tacos, drinks, a DJ, and we're really just out here being one with the community, creating a really cool experience and creating moments for the community to remember. Here with the Rad Crew, um, just kind of extending into the community. Um, I think that the Open is the time to do that. So it's really exciting to just meet new faces, watch a different gym do their Friday Night Lights and just get involved um, in a fun event for you. Every year is a chance for the OG members that have been doing this for, for since the beginning to revisit and enjoy the Open, but also for the people that are brand new are discovering the global community, right? And kind of getting to learn a little bit about the history of CrossFit, the history of the sport. Uh, most people are like, oh, I'm not a competitor. And so we say, you know, whether you're a competitor, first timer, this is just a way to apply what we do day in and day out every year. It's like an annual test of fitness that we want everyone to participate in no matter where you're at. Big thanks to CrossFit Paradiso and Rad for having you down. I mean, that just looked like a fantastic time. It was a picturesque day in LA, like despite the time of year, mm -hmm. sun was out, everybody was in a good mood. I had some of the best street tacos that I've ever had so much. <laughs> so I couldn't resist wolfing down a plate of them right before I basically stepped up to do my heat. You know, it's just a recipe for success for me. Makes that performance even more <laughs> impressive given that you had that full stomach. So Powered by Al Pastor, baby. <laughs> good on you. We have a lot more of the open to get done. Only one more week, but there's, you know, who knows what's out there, but I do know that you have a lot more travel now as you get to go from CrossFit Paradiso now across the pond to London for the final Rad Friday Night Lights at CrossFit Surbiton. That's going to be a blast. I am insanely jealous of you right now. Yeah, we are uh, We are going over to foggy London town. I'll be uh, <laughs> joining the entire Rad crew because half of their crew is based out mm -hmm. of London. Um, and I'll be going head to head apparently with the CEO and founder of Rad, Ben Massey, former Ooh. games uh, team athlete. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is a fit gym. Uh, Sir Everton put a team at the games just a few years ago. It was in the top 10. So uh, I'm going to have my work cut out for me. That is going to be a lot of fun. And again, thanks to Rad for helping us out with these shows. Thanks to them for having us out to these Friday Night Lights. Jealous that you get to go to uh, London for that one. That's going to be, I've never been. It's going to yeah. be an absolute blast for you. I, I was there a couple of years ago calling the semifinal event uh, yeah. for Strength and Depth. So I'm going to pop in, you know, maybe, maybe have some afternoon tea. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> you know, 
keep my name in the top 25% of the leaderboard and then, you you know, come on home. Again, thanks to Rad for being our sponsor for today. You can scan the QR code on your screen or go to rad-global.com. They have a ton of great gear on there, including these great Rad trainers uh, that they've been nice enough to send us. Can't wait to give those things a whirl. And good luck with 24.3. I'm not sure it's going to be as much of a groove pitch to you as this last one was. Thanks to CrossFit Paradiso uh, for hosting Tommy and for letting him Shout down to some free food. <laughs> Appreciate that. Always good to know that when he's on the road, he's being uh, well fed. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Good luck with 24.3. For Tommy Marquez, I'm Sean Woodland. Take care of each other. Be better. And we'll talk to you guys next time.